Hi friends, I'm Sanjeev Duggal and let me talk a little about myself and my journey in steel sector before I take you through my presentation. I started my professional journey in sale in 1983 as a management trainee at the age of 20 and left sale as chief general manager at the ripe age of 53 to explore digital marketing as it was impacting marketing of all products in all markets. While in Steel Authority, I worked for all domestic markets, mainly three regions uh, in domestic market, in international markets like US, Europe, Southeast Asia, <clears throat> and Bangladesh, so on and so forth. The pride was that we worked in rural markets also, and we laid the six laid the retail channel of steel authority in all the 600 districts of the country wherever they allowed steel going to the presentation as you can see covid has not been able to impact much on the steel industry growth in steel industry has not been impacted globally and whatever little impact that shall not that is there shall be not normalized by July September 21. As you can see, Indian steel consumption rose by 7.6% on month to month basis in October 20 and PSU steel giant sale posted a 21% growth in sales over CPLY and 14% growth in production. COVID-19 has not been able to impact the rural India as much as the urban centers. Rural India has contributed significantly to India, India's increase in online consumers. Millions of rural Indians have moved online thanks to inexpensive and smartphones. There are immense opportunities in rural India to foster steel demand at it hold, and it holds key to enhancing per capita steel usage in the country, which is very low for rural India presently, and that, which is 18 kg per capita. And the complete for total India, it is it still remains to be only 76 kgs per capita. There's a strong housing demand in rural areas and they have not been impacted by COVID. There's a strong demand of roofing sheets and steel bars for individual house builders in both rural and semi-urban areas. You can see that how the steel consumption is basically in construction and infrastructure sector and it is more than 50 percent of the consumption in these sectors so this is the place also where the steel ultimately the steel consumption has to grow as per the natural drive for a country like india notwithstanding covid setback the construction activities established growth path. This means more small houses in lower density areas, remote working shall increase growth in suburban areas. For construction, historical reasons have made us focus more on concrete than on steel. But new mindset has to come and the old mindset has to change. Designers are aware now of products like parallel flange beams which are being produced both by Jindals as well as by Steel Authority of India Limited. While the mindsets have to change, we have to, you know, the street level skilled manpower for con concrete cons construction is available. Whereas for steel based construction, we require separate skills like welding and riveting, which skill sets are yet to be made available. And for the mindset to change, even these skill sets 
have to be there with all the people who are into the steel and construction industry. There's a lot of scope for rural infrastructure which can use steel con construction and can be replicated across thousands of villages. As you can see, steel is used in residential and commercial projects, bridges, ports, highways, and is an ideal material for fast, safe, and economical construction. In residential buildings, use of steel helps in speed of helps in speeding of construction, reducing 20% of construction time. Imagine that amount of labor cost which is going to be saved if 20% construction time is going to be saved. Site management cost is also reduced to 3 to 4%. Minimizing floor to floor heights reduces the costs by 5%. Reduction in foundation cost is to the tune of 3% through steel usage. While if we come to commercial buildings, over and above, these savings which we have done for, re for residential buildings, in commercial buildings, even column-free space is... Uh, uh, also increased and we uh, the and uh, it gives us a better space by 1% energy consumption is reduced because of more open areas when when the steel structures are made and steel buildings are made steel structures are 100% recyclable that's another great thing as far as uh, <clears throat> the environment is concerned few areas which are drivers in the infrastructure for our country are going to be <clears throat> cleaning of Ganga project, civil aviation, more airports, railways, more highways, power, shipping, mining. We have to build a lot of smart cities and also smart housing everywhere in both urban and rural areas. In urbanization, we are going to get tremendous opportunities in this country. 700 to 900 million square meters of commercial and residential space is to be created. 2.5 billion square meters of roads are to be paved. 7,400 kilometers of metros and subways are to be built in the next 15 years. Imagine the amount of steel which is going to be required and imagine that how much steel is going to help in the urbanization of our country. There are further urbanization op opportunities as new cities are developed on the industrial corridors. Also 24% of urban population lives in slums and requires low cost housing, which only steel can provide. There will be public transport. The public transportation today covers only 30% of the total trips which needs to cover at least around 70 to 80 percent so all this transportation will also be helped by steel there are going to be pipelines laid all over for water supply sewerage treatment solid waste collection and all these pipelines for water and sanitation are going to be basically of steel Well, another thing where, where, where there is going to be a big opportunity for steel industry is that all these projects will need faster implementation and also low cost. I mean, in, also in housing. So, you know, like if it's going to be a faster implementation, then it is the steel which is going to be the only answer. Also, we have to increase the connectivity very fast through roads, flyovers, metros, bridges, and there also avail <clears throat> the usage of steel is going to help tremendously. 
Now let me come to how a value-added stainless steel industry also <coughs> stainless steel also is going to be consumed more in the rural areas for the advantage of rural people and for their progress and growth. If you will see that today around 60% of the milk goes a waste because we don't have stainless steel chillers. We are not going to, we are not able to preserve the milk for, 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 for it to go, go to the <coughs> proper dairies for further, you know, processing. Now, also, you know, we will have stainless steel chillers. We will have stainless steel silos for foods and grains so that our foods and grains remain totally protected. Our fisheries are going to gain through stainless steel nets and stainless steel tanks. We are going to provide clean water supply <clears throat> to the villages through stainless steel tanks. We are going to have better health and hygiene <clears throat> in the rural area by using stainless steel toilets, which are now being used in Indian railways also. Well, now let me come to my favorite subject that how digitalization is going to help the rural areas. See, today we have to transfer knowledge to the rural areas that how steel can be used for construction in a, at a cheaper cost for them. That can be done through digitalization, through use of videos and use of vernacular language in those videos and explaining them in, a, in those videos in a very simple manner that how to make small small and smart houses through steel also by providing better